that video call. Okay. So what I've actually done is, what I've done is I've given you guys a, 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 a really an achieved question to get started off with while I get things sorted out here. Um, I'm hoping that you guys have had a chance to actually go through this question. Uh, I know it looks like a differential equation, but um, you know this pretty much is the same rules as um, normal integration as well. But what you can do is just rewrite this as dy is equal to 2 over x dx. And then when you integrate both of these sides, that's going to be y and that's going to be 2 ln of x <coughs> plus c. Okay? Now the next thing is you've actually got to solve the equation. So you've been given that x is equal to 1, y is equal to 3. So substitute it. So you've got 3 equals 2 times ln of 1 plus c. And ln of 1 should be 0. So then you've got 0 plus c equals to 3. Therefore, c is equal to 3. So your equation then is y equals 2 ln of x plus 3. Is that right? So this is this is basically just your, your standard achieved question. There's nothing special about this. But I have seen questions like this coming on a repeat basis. Just like I've been picking up questions for you guys that I can do on a constant basis, right? So this is the next one that I want you guys to try and do. Alright, so this was um, a merit question. Uh, I can't remember where it was from, but I know it's over the last four years I looked at looked for these questions. So I'll give you guys a bit of a starting point. Because we're going to do these types of questions today. The first thing you want to do is, is you want to write it so that all the y's are on one side and all the x's are on the other side. So cross multiplying this. So what you can do is you can actually rewrite this as 3y dy equals cos x dx. And then from here, you can integrate both sides. And I'm going to leave that with you guys for now. I want you guys to try and do this by yourselves and then I'll go through the answer at the end, alright? As usual guys, what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll tell you guys what which part you need to do for achieve merit and excellence. Sorry, not excellence in this case, this is only merit. So integration of 3y dy, <coughs> you can write that as 3y squared over 2 and then integration of cos x can be written as sin x and of course don't forget your plus c now for this particular question just doing it up to here just that part there should get you guys an achieved all right because um even though if you forget the c according to this exam schedule in 2016 you can still get an achieved for this but look you're not that far from getting a, a merit all you got to do is substitute y x and figure out what C is. So, we've been told um, one thing. We've actually been told that Y is equal to 1 when X equals to pi over 6. So, we're going to substitute that. So, when X equals to pi over 6, Y is equal to 1. So, I've got 3 times 1 squared over 2 equals sine of pi over 6 plus C. So, here, 3 times 1 is 3. That's 1.5. Did I even record all of that? Yeah, I don't think they've actually recorded the whole thing. Still recording. No, no, no. It didn't record in this. So I'm sure I talked for more than that. But anyway, that's the question we're doing next, guys. If you're watching this, I'll go back to the answers very shortly. was the answer for the previous one just pause and have a look through folks and we're going to go back to this question here I do that first part here so if you're stuck what you have is you got dy dx equals y over root x cross multiply remember you want the y on your left hand side so this is going to be dy over y equals 1 over square root of x dx. 
Now, simpler way of looking at this is 1 over y dy. And we can rewrite that x to the power of half in the denominator. And then when it comes to the numerator, it's x to the power of negative half dx. So that's the first few steps that you need to do before you even start integrating it. Okay, I'll give you another couple of more minutes for those guys that have just got up to here. When I integrate this, I've got ln of y equals x to the power of half over half plus c. Is that all right? So this could be written as ln of y equals 2 root x plus c. Tell me if I've gone too fast. Because 1 divided by half is 2. And then x to the power of half can be written as uh, root x. So now, if x is equal to 4 and y equals to 1, then we can say ln of 1 equals 2 times root 4 plus c. ln of 1 is equal to 0. 2 times root 4 is equal to 4 plus c. Therefore, c is equal to negative 4. So then, the equation here is going to be ln of y equals 2 root x minus 4. Now, there is another way of writing this. You could leave it, leave your answer like this, or you could also leave your answer like this, e to the power of 2 root x minus 4. In terms of grades, uh, achieved is here. This is achieved, and then this one here is your merit. Yeah, so good question here, but um, you could leave it like this, or this, it doesn't matter. According to this, it says correct solution or correct integration. So you could leave it in both formats. All right, next question. Are we happy with this one? Next one is this one here. So as usual, guys, bring all the y's to one side, take the x's to the other side, and then integrate both sides, solve and get this question sorted. This one, notice that y is equal to 4 when x equals to 0. And they're actually asking you for when, what is y when x equals to 2. So, cross multiply, you've got dy 4y equals e2x dx. Then, integrate both sides. You're going to get 4y squared over 2 equals now integration of exponentials just write everything as it is for integration you just divide by whatever the differentiation of the power is so in this case it's 2 that's it plus c now substitute the values so x equals to 0 y is equal to 4 so we got 4 times 4 squared over 2 equals e to the power of 0 over 2 plus c so what we've got is 16, 16 times 2, we've got 32. Now e to the power of 0 is 1, half plus c. Now those of you guys that got 32 as your c value, e to the power of 0 is not equal to 0. It's actually 1. Okay, so that's why you got 32. So in this case, c is equal to 31.5. So once we do that, We've got x equals to 2. So, what we've got is, don't forget that it's actually asking for y, so you can't just stop at uh, 2y squared. Um, so, we've got 4y squared over 2, e to the power of 2x over 2, plus z. We're trying to figure out what y is. We know what x is, is 2, so we can write this as 4y squared over 2, e to the power of 2 times 2 is 4. But we also know what c is. Okay, so at this point, guys, just um, rearrange things. I mean, do you want me to show you guys how to get the nice number, or are you happy just putting this in the calculator and solving it? Just take it in the calculator, all right? That's all I can say. Because what you have is, I will show you anyway. You've got 2y squared equals e to the power of 4 over 2, plus I'm going to rewrite this as 63 over 2. So then y squared equals e to the power of 4 
over 4 plus 63 over 4 and then y is equal to square root of that. Uh, the answer that we're expecting in this case is 5.42. Is that all right? Okay, I think I've got one last question, folks, and then we're going to be done with this little short session here. Unless you want me to go find an excellence question like this for differential equations. I will try and find it. Why don't you guys try and do this merit question? And then I'll go find uh, an excellence question. So, as usual, cross multiply. You're going to get 2y dy equals 3 root x dx. And then integrate both of them. So you've got 2y squared over 2 equals, this becomes 3x to the power of half. So this becomes 3x to the power of 3 over 2 over 3 over 2 plus c. This can be simplified to y squared equals, now 3 divided by 3 over 2, that's equal to 2, x 3 over 2 plus c. Now it says when x equals to 4, y is equal to 5. So 5 squared equals 2 times 4 to the power of 3 over 2 plus c. I got 25. This one, I'm sorry, I can't do it in my head. Just for the viewers, I should show them how to do it. Thank you. 2 times. Okay, 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 I get it. Thank you. I didn't know it was 16. So C is equal to 9. All right. Um, for this question, correct general solution gets you an achieved. So I would probably say here. As for the rest of it, we've got X equals to 9. What is Y? So we got Y squared equals 2 X to the power of 3 over 2 plus c, so y squared equals 2 times 9 to the power of 3 over 2 plus c. Now 9 to the power of half is 3, 3 to the power of 3 is 27. Is that right? Thank you. Well, what about c? You didn't work it out, right? 9. So then y squared equals 54 plus 9. y squared equals 63. And then y is equal to square root of 63. Final answer. Right. Now this next question that I'm going to give you guys, it is an excellent question from, uh, question from 2016. Uh, I'm actually going to let you suffer in it for about a few minutes. Because I'm telling you, if I actually give you how uh, the tips on how to rearrange it, then I've basically done the whole question for you. So I'm going to give you guys about five minutes to try and Play around with it. This is the question. So five minutes, and I'm going to give you guys a bit of a hint. These are the hints that I'm going to give you. Remember, back in year 11 when you did this, a to the power of m plus n could be written as a m times a n. That's the only hint that I'm going to give you guys. So have a go. Try it out. Like you guys have all tried to do different ways. The way I kind of mess around with is this one here. So what I have is, uh, first step is this, sec x dy dx equals e to the power of y times e to the power of sine x. Next step, cross multiply. So I've got dy over e to the power of y equals e to the power of sine x divided by sec x dx. Is that okay? The next step is understanding that I don't want to have x in the denominator at all. I know that 1 over sec x is cos x. So I can rewrite this as, uh, in fact, I'm going to bring the e to the power of y to the numerator, which becomes e to the power of negative y dy equals cos x e sine x dx. Okay? 
And again, I should start seeing the patterns here. Sin x, when you differentiate sin x, you actually end up with cos x. So, if I was to use um, chain rule here, this one I'm just going to be e to the power of negative y divided by negative 1 equals cos x e sin x. It'll say as it is. But when I differentiate sin x, I get cos x. So, that's what I divide by. And what ends up happening is both of those things cancel out each other. And I'm simply left over with negative e to the power of negative y equals e to the power of sine x plus c. So far so good? So it says that when x equals to 0, y is equal to negative 1. So that means I've got negative e to the power of negative negative 1 equals e to the power of sine of 0 plus c. So here I've got negative e to the power of positive 1 equals e to the power of 1 plus c. And so c is equal to, something's missing. Sorry, sine 0 is 0. Thanks for telling me that, guys. Yeah, 1 plus c. Which means, I just want to double check here, c is equal to negative e to the power of 1 minus 1. Now, if you want that as a number, uh, you got negative... Is it exactly 7? What? e to the power of positive 1. No, because it's minus y. See, remember at the top here? That's negative y. Yeah? So it's negative, negative 1, which makes it plus 1. Okay, so I think, what the hell did the question ask? Find the y when x equals pi over 2. So my equation now is uh, negative e, negative y equals e to the power of sine x. And my c value was minus e to the power of 1 minus 1. And they're asking when x equals to pi over 2, what is y? So I've got negative e, negative y equals e of sine of pi over 2 minus e1 minus 1. Side question. So if you have like e to the power of 3x, right, and you want to integrate it, you would go e to the power of 3x divided by whatever the differentiation of this is, which is 3. So if you have e to the power of negative y dy, then you would go e to the power of negative y divided by differentiation of this, which is negative 1. So that's what happens right there. Okay, going back to this question. I got negative e minus y. e to the power of uh, sine pi over 2 is 1. Minus e1 minus 1. So I've got negative e to the negative y equals negative 1. So e to the power of negative y equals positive 1. Is that alright? Because look, divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. And then I've got, at what point is, because if I go e to the power of negative y equals 1, then I can say negative y equals ln of 0. Sorry, ln of 1. And then negative y equals to 0. Therefore, y is equal to 0. Now, they, they do say this. Like, if you guys use c as negative 3.7183, if you use this as your c value, then your y value would be negative 0 0.0611. And um, they are actually accepting that answer. All right, guys, that was an excellent question from 2016. So as you can see, the first part is the most trickiest part. I think once you do the first part, everything else becomes fairly straightforward. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you.